Привет всем, с вами Забыла Риц из Риц Моментом, и сегодня мы делаем подкаст вместе с Эшлин Хаден о том, как а, максимально обезопасить ваши риски, когда вы начинаете ваш бизнес на Amazon. Подробности в видео смотрите сейчас. Всем! Hello, everyone, and here I am again, Isabella Ritz with Amazon Made Simple Podcast. And as a tradition, uh, I'm having the very great experts every single time. Today I have Ashley Haddon, and I'm going to talk about her a little bit. I met her at ASD event about, I believe, already two months ago, and I saw her first time. I never met her before, and she, like, she was just sending so much positive uh, attitude and energy. She's just like, she went on a stage and she said, okay, everybody stand up. I'm like, oh, wow, that's aggressive. Uh, <laughs> and then she did some very nice tricks where she was showing to Amazon sellers and e-commerce sellers what might happen with them if they will not use the insurance. So today we're going to talk about a little bit boring stuff, but this boring stuff, Ashley can, Ashley can explain you in a very funny uh, way. So Ashley, we- welcome to... Uh, my podcast and uh, let us know a little bit about your background. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. So my background was in banking for my first career. I was a branch manager in a bank for a really long time and decided that I wanted out of banking. And one of my friends said, Hey, there's this company hiring, go do the interview and I'll get 250 bucks. Um, So I took the interview just so she could get some cash. And the gentleman who interviewed me said that this was a man's industry and that those men would outsell me every day. So I said, I'll take the job and I'll prove you wrong. (laughs) Uh, I was the top rep in the state, third in the entire company, really enjoyed what I did and really felt like I was helping. Um, So I stayed in insurance, but decided to open my own company. So I just celebrated my fifth year on my own um, in my fifth year in the e-com space. So I kind of got into e-commerce on accident also. Uh, I had a client come to me and said, hey, I'm a third party seller on Amazon and they're required me to have this insurance and I have no idea what I'm doing. Can you help me? And I was like, no, I didn't even know that there was third party sellers on Amazon. I didn't know what you were doing. I knew that e-commerce was still, insurance companies still didn't like it because we don't know anything about it. So I told him to go away and he didn't, (laughs) (laughs) and he didn't, and he didn't, and he didn't. So he kept bugging me. So I finally ended up getting him a policy and he's like, Hey, I'm in this Facebook group. There's 15,000 of us. Can I post your information? And I was like, yeah. And it was story after story of these sellers who feel like the redheaded stepchild. They feel like nobody cares. They feel like nobody wants to help them. Insurance companies don't like them because they don't know anything about them. And I just fell in love. Like, you guys are so crazy. But I fell in love with the community. And I fell in love with, like this, a podcast to help other sellers. Like, there's nothing else in this, in here that, like, helps people grow their businesses. Like you're each other's competition and you still love and support and encourage each other. So I I fell in love. So now this is my fifth year doing it. And we're the only um, brokerage firm that focuses solely on e-com. So we, well, that's impressive. That's impressive. And uh, the story inside of the story, how universe was like knocking into your door. Uh Actually, (laughs) Ashlyn, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. No, I don't want to do it. No, you gotta do it. Uh-huh. And now, and now you're actually in this space, and you yeah. see how many people actually need your help. So, 
be, like I understand a lot of listeners we have right now, they really don't understand why do they need to have an insurance and what the heck this insurance is about. Yeah. They're perfectly fine without insurance till something has happened. <laughs> and of course, we all love successful story and the story of success. We will not talk about them today. We're going to talk about scary stories. Yeah. And I remember like, like you have a couple of them, a couple of thousands of them. So, uh, could you please tell us the top 10 categories that people must have, should <laughs> have the yeah. insurance? Like so, they, if they are in this category, they cannot not have insurance even they're selling under $10,000. Yes. So back up, Amazon requires them to have it if they hit the $10,000 um, a month mark. That's when they're starting to police it. So if you are selling anything that goes on the body, so your topicals, your lotions, face masks, all of that kind of stuff in the body, anything that you put in your mouth absolutely must have insurance. That includes supplements. That includes food. That includes um, a baby spoon is going in your mouth. That you absolutely have to have insurance for a pet, not just your like ingestibles for a pet, but a dog leash, a retractable dog leash. What happened Absolutely. with the dog leash? How okay, so <laughs> a couple years, it's almost been almost two years now. Um, there was a guy that was walking his dog with the retractable leash and the leash snapped and broke off as the dog pulled away. And the leash came back and hit him in the eye. And he was a surgeon. And so he sued, I don't even remember what they settled for, but millions and millions of dollars because he said now he could not perform surgery because he had an eye injury and it like screwed up his, his peripheral vision. So something as silly as a dog leash, everyone like, yeah, that's not a big deal. Millions of dollars. My so, first guess was like, did this leash choke the dog? Right? But it's actually worse. <laughs> oh my gosh. So on the body, in the body for a pet, anything for a child, um, that includes you know, your foods and supplements and things like that. But that's also like binkies and blankets and um, those things that you wear your kids. You know, we had a claim with that one. Claim shots. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, you know, like you wrap your child or like this cloth around your baby and no. you stuff your child in it. We ended up having... Um, Hold on, you're a mother, right? You have... You have I am, I have two boys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I remember you have. And you I had child. two big boys. So I yeah. had a, a 10 pounder. So I would never have stuffed my child in one of those things. Yeah. But, you know, some people do. Um, but she ended up stuffing her kid and she was out for a hike, tripped over a rock and the baby came out and she sued the manufacturer of the like baby Bjorn um, because the baby fell out. Um, so that's. That's on the body, in the body for a pet, for a child. Anything that goes with the water. So you're looking at pools, canoes, anything that goes in the water or around the water. People drown all the time and they're going to sue everybody along with it. Um, anything um, that you're using for exercise. So your weights, your resistance bands. My God, I've seen so many claims with these stupid resistance bands flinging off and hitting people and all of this crazy stuff. So any type of exercise equipment, anything in sexual wellness, anything that's going in the body, anything that's touching Coming out up, from the body, anything in that category. Absolutely. Anything um, that is in like the knife category, self-protection, um, sharp edges, those kinds of things. And then I say my number 10 would be anything in the medical field. Even if it's not being ingested, um, it could absolutely be part of a claim. So we've seen things with just like bandages and they're saying like the bandage um, made my sore worse and I ended up having to get my arm amputated and things like that. So I would say those are my top, top um, things. Like if you sell anything in those categories, you are silly if you don't have insurance. Uh that sounds <laughs> as well as like, wow. like yeah of course like uh being an amazon space i understand how it goes i understand how it works and the other day i was doing the podcast with um 
uh, Leslie Hansel from Riverbend, you probably know them. Uh-huh. And she was talking about different type of the uh, scary stories, how they've been appealing, how they've been reinstating the accounts. And this is actually regarding your story as well. Uh, the guy bought, uh, no, the guy was selling the car seat warmers or like whatever it's called, like when it's, it's a winter, so you want your butt mm-hmm. to be warm and your car doesn't have it uh, like installed. And uh, the guy was like in instruction, it's been said like, do not use uh, this uh, plug for the cars older than it. I believe. Huh? To like convert it? Yeah, don't, 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 yeah, don't, you don't use this plug when you're uh, using it in a car for with the cars older, like whatever, 1988 or 1992, whatever. And the guy's hot car was like super old and he didn't listen for the instruction. And he, of course, he plugged it in and uh, the car was burned. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's no more car. So if you if you hypothetically can have this type of the cases and you have a lot of warnings on your on your um, product. So, guys, please make sure to buy the insurance because, yeah, uh, people like uh, Ashlyn and Lessa, they will help you out, but it will be already too late. So and we've even seen Isabella like people come and say, hey, I've got all these warning labels. I'm going to push this back on the consumer. Um, we had one of those. You like attach it over the door and you kind of like stretch it down like this and you like exercise your arms with it. Yeah. And we thought that this was foolproof. She had a video on how to install it. We had paperwork on how to install it. We had things on how not to install. Like we felt so comfortable that that nobody could install this thing incorrectly. Well, of course, somebody did because people don't read instructions. Um, And one of the things snapped it again came back and hit this person in the face and they sued. And she's like, well, I'm not responsible because there's a warning label on there. And it's like, unfortunately, you can have all the warning labels in the world that doesn't stop somebody from suing you. You still have to defend yourself in that lawsuit. Maybe you're not going to be charged with $2 million in a judgment, but you are going to have to hire an attorney and you are going to have to defend yourself. And Correct. that could be hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees because attorneys aren't cheap. So and it's here's worth the it question: to pay the legal fees. Correct. So, and here is the question: If I have the insurance and the shit happens, am I going to the insurance or am I going to the attorney? And insurance, like how the claim process works. I have okay. insurance. Thanks God, I never used it. So yeah, so I if you know, have insurance. I- you call the insurance company and we all know insurance companies don't like to pay claims, right? Nobody wants to pay yeah. claims. So they hire the best damn attorneys out there to get you out of the claim so they don't have to pay out. So you pick up the phone, you call your carrier and your carrier carrier handles the rest of it. Now you're still going to have questions and things that you're going to have to answer, but you know that that carrier is on your back and they are going to try like heck to get you out of that claim because they don't want to pay it either. That down. Cool. Uh, So let's compare the numbers. So uh, I know the prices of attorneys in the United States, like generally speaking, if it's a family attorney, it's about 350 an hour. If it's a business attorney, it's about 350 and up an hour. So let's say the good attorney will cost us probably 550 an hour, right? So mm-hmm. the minimum that we're going to pay for the attorney, it's to my knowledge, it's a minimum is a hundred hours overall. So it's fifty-five thousand dollars, guys. You're looking to pay to the attorney if everything will go smooth and well. How if much it for goes it, smooth. If, if it goes smooth? It never goes yeah. smooth. Yeah, if if. So what numbers are we looking at if we are buying the insurance? Yeah. So insurance really depends on what you're selling, where you're sourcing from, and how much you're selling. If you're doing private label, it's going to be it's going to be more expensive because you are now 100% responsible for that item. If you're just reselling this PaperMate pen, I'm going to go back to PaperMate and we're going to get them to pay majority of that out. All you're out is the legal fees. So you can see policies anywhere from $500 a year US all the way up to I mean I have a I have a policy $150,000 a year US. 
So it really depends on what you're selling, where you're sourcing and how much. The more you sell, the, the more, more items. Buy. Yeah, the more expensive it's going to be. Let's talk about two categories of uh, sellers, the, the one that are the majority of our listeners. So category number, the one who is going to, who just start to sell on Amazon. So of course, like most of, like, I think it's, 85% or 90% of my listeners and my followers, they are private label uh, sellers. So let's assume their first year of sales will cross in between 100 to 150 a year. Yeah. But right now they're at zero. So the moment they are at zero and they're coming to you and they're saying, Ashlyn, I need insurance. Where I'm looking at? What Usually number? we can keep first year sellers who are not doing any private label in the 500 to $650 a year okay. range. Okay. So, and let's say they crossed 100K or up within first year, what number they're looking at to be Still the same. So we do it by a year. So we anticipate their first year sale. So we will reevaluate it the second year. Even if they go up to like 250, we still should be under, typically under $800 a year. So most people land under $1,000 a year unless they're doing half a million dollars a year. Most private label sellers are in that $1,500 a year range if they're doing a low risk type of product. So what is the low risk? So I would say like mugs and hats and cups and um, home decor, okay. that kind of stuff. Home Anything decor can hit you on the head. Do what? Home decor can hit you on the head. It, it could, but the... Yeah. I mean, it's all about, yeah, of course. it's all about the numbers and what yeah, the joking, past yeah. has happened. I even had, um, I did a worker's comp insurance for an influencer in this space and he had an employee stand up and hit her head on the back of a sconce, like those things that hang up on the wall. And she sued for like $4 million because she had permanent brain damage. So yes, a sconce, which is home decor, could absolutely cause damage, but the likelihood of that versus a supplement is is definitely less. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So, and now you guys understand you're looking at 800 a year versus to risk but like 55,000. 55,000 best case scenario. Like, uh, and trust us, living in the United States, knowing how everything works, 55,000 is kind of the good scenario that you're looking at if something is happening. Because when people are suing you for like three, four, whatever thousand, hundreds and th millions and thousands of dollars, like uh, you're going to pay to your attorney as much as you can because you, you want to avoid to pay four million dollars. Uh, that one that I was telling you about this. This thing, yeah. yeah. Um, the legal fees on that one, I have a, a sample of the check over here $601,854.22 to defend her from the lawsuit. That was just the legal fees. $601,000. Oh she didn't have insurance. She did have insurance. That's what the insurance company ended up paying in legal fees. Oh my gosh. Oh my yep. God. That's insane. Well, you know how to save money. And of course, yeah. <laughs> I, I believe we can talk about the stories like forever because both of us has something to share about this very, very scary um, Amazon seller journey. And uh, generally speaking, when you know how that you can fall, you always can uh, make some uh, smooth in Russia, we say like smooth mattress. You can put the smooth mattress, making sure you're not falling pretty bad. So Ashlyn, if uh, people want to ask you about the insurance yeah. and uh, to process with that, like, What's the best way to request a quote? Um, to get a quote, ecom.insure. So it's E C O M dot I N S U R E. So it's under this video. Okay. Yep, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, or you can always email me. I'm on Facebook. You guys can follow, follow me or find me on Facebook, Ashlyn D. Haddon, um, or my email, sales at Ashlyn Haddon Insurance.com. Send me smoke signals. I'm around everywhere. So. Anywhere yeah. you want to reach out to me, you're more than welcome to. And by the way, your new outfit looks great. Thank you. Good job <laughs> to put that up. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. I awesome. am very happy to have you. You're positive as always, and your energy is like going <laughs> all over the places. <laughs> and yeah, so I, I love to talk to you, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks. For...